Hi everybody, this is Ellen. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to make a happy present round box with a bow. Um, not quite sure how I'm going to title that one, but um, just kind of a little bit of everything in there. It's just a cute little bow on the top with a lid and then the bottom box portion. It opens up and it is pretty big, so um, I did that intentionally for this one just because if you want to actually put something in here you need to have a little bit of room. Um, I like how the little lid kind of curves up so you get like a little, it's almost kind of like a cupcake top, I suppose, but I think it's super cute and this one's kind of the bigger version. I'll have smaller versions and different versions, I think, for present boxes because presents come in all different shapes and sizes. Um, Band-wise, it is a little band heavy. It's in, in its entirety, it's less than a whole bag of bands, but um, everything from the bow to the whole body is 585. Um, just the basket portion is 339 so you can have that you can use different color bands you can change the rows you can add little cap bands to get little stripes in there you can do a lot of different things to decorate this bottom portion I left it kind of plain just because um, that's part of where your creativity comes in and kind of adding new things to it if you add wrapped bands to this for like little polka dots it will increase the size of the bottom portion a little bit so keep that in mind if you do that um, I might only do like one wrapped band if you want the lids to, to still match up pretty well on the top. And then the lid portion, the bow in its entirety is 99 bands. Um, I did half and half, so or about half and half, so it was about 45 white and then 54 black. I just kind of alternated as I did them around just for a little bit of color pop. And then this red portion here is 115. And then there's a little trim piece that helps to keep this outside edge stable so it doesn't collapse in on itself so much. And that is in total 32 bands, but I did half and half again, so it was 16 of each color. And of course you can add your own little touches to it. You can make these, the black and white bands, you can make those red too or whatever color your lid is. Um, you can kind of add lots of different things. You can make the bow all one color, you can make the little each little piece on here one color so you can divide it up pretty well so that if you don't have enough of one color divide it up to get a little bit different look each time and then if you're going to actually give this as a present I'd probably just take a take your hook go in through a little side band on each piece then you could just take it and pull a band through there and kind of tie it together so that whatever you put inside doesn't fall out so, we'll get started. We'll make all the pieces first. Um, there's a little bit with the bow here. And then we'll start making the rest of it. So, for the bow, it is nine pieces like these. I did mine in alternating colors again. It's kind of the, it's like a blue and white band and then a purple and white band. The dual layer stuff. But it's, they are a cap band, and then there are ten more bands on there. So, to make those, it's your cap band, wrapped around once. Then you grab both bands, wrap them around again, and then I'm alternating the colors, but you can make them all the same. Then you put another band on, double it, pull it through your first band, back on the hook. And then I'm going to alternate to a different color. And I'll keep doing that until I've pulled through a total of 10 bands. So the cap band, which is that blue one, and then 10 more bands through. And for me, it's just I noticed that if I have, once I have six blue and five purple, then I know that I'm in the right spot to stop. And you could make these a little bit longer, too, or shorter. Well, I don't know about shorter, but maybe a little longer, a couple more bands, but... 
something like that. And you need to have nine of these total. So that'll take a little bit of time, but it's not too bad to make them. Nine of them. And then you want to find some place to store them out of your way. I'm using my little broken loom. Mini loom. Yay! Good. Those pin bars are good for after you break them. And then um, you can use like a pencil or another hook. Just anything that you have to make those so that you end up with nine total of them. So you can pause the video here and make those and then come back for the other pieces. Um, or the only thing that's really left is to talk about the eyes and the cheeks. So, But once you've either paused or however you're going to work that magic there. Um, the eyes, I'm using 9mm pony beads. They're the normal size ones you can find in most stores. So they're not... Got a little extra piece on it. If you don't have pony beads, you can use bands. You'd use two bands, that whatever color you want your eye to be, on the hook, wrapped around one time. Then you grab all four of those bands, wrap them around again, and then pull through two bands that are going to be in the color of your basket, or the bottom portion of your present box. And that would be your eye band. So you'd want two of those, or have two beads ready to put band bands through later. And then our cheeks are made basically the same way, but it's just one band, whatever color you want the cheek to be, on the hook, wrap it around, grab both bands, wrap them around again, and then pull through two bands the color of your box. And I know I'm going to keep calling it a box, but it's round, so it's not technically a box, but it's much simpler than calling it a round box. And I will have one that I'll square out for you as well, so extra plastic. So two cheeks. And then once you have those nine pieces and your face parts, we'll be ready to go with the rest. And we'll start with the basket first. Basket. Basket. Not a basket. A box. It looks like a basket, so it's not too far off. So you have your loom wrong end towards you. And then you want your bands that you're going to use for, for the best. Ba -da 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 -da. Box. Yeah. It is again late at night, so you have to excuse me for not remembering what to say. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to start, you're going to want to find the center of your loom, or around the center, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, right around the 7th pin up. We're going to go from this pin out to the 6 pins around. Everything's double banded, unless I say differently, but I don't think there are any single bands. So 2 bands from the center pin. Yes, center pin out to the 6 pins around it. Like that. Then on the center pin, you need a cap band. It'll be two bands. Make sure these are good bands on the pin. And then wrap them around one and two. So once you have that, you'll go in through the cap band, grab the top two bands that go to the outside, lift them up through that cap band, and pull them back towards themselves. And then you keep doing that all the way around the six pins. I was looking for a lighter color with the dual layer bands, but I couldn't find one. I wanted to use a green, so I didn't have the, a light green with the white on it. But then I found these, and I'm like, they're called Jolly Green. How appropriate. So like that. Then we're going to do a row around the outside. Still the double banding. And if you start here... When we do the expanding, if you always start where I start, you'll be able to follow how I move the bands when we expand, so keep that in mind too. But if you know how to the expand, then don't worry about it. So like that. Then you'll go and flip the bottom four bands up over the top of the pin. Put 
push those down and now we're going to expand so starting on this top right one I'm going to lift up the top two bands and I'm going to bring them up a pin and these bands should be connected to the center pin right here right here the outside bands do not cross so they come down to this lower right pin if I just picked up the top two bands they would cross over the bands that are still on the pin and that's what we don't want when we expand so if that happens then you have to pick up all four bands expand them out bring them down a pin and then grab the top two bands and bring them back up to the pin they were on so then there's no crossing right here then we'll go over to the other side so top left I have to pick up all four bands bring them up a pin grab the top two bring them back down the lower left you can grab the top two bands, bring them down. Then we'll do our centers. So that these are just, you pick up the top two bands, you see which side they're coming from. These are coming from the left, so I'm just going to take them over to the left and stretch them way up there. And I'll grab the other two, and those will go way up on the right. And then you do the same thing down here on the bottom one, bottom center. Pick up the top two, they're coming from the left, so they'll go over to the left. And the other two are coming from the right, so they'll go to the right. So now we're on 12 pins. There's two bands on every pin. And we're going to do a row all the way around this. My cat, the newest kitty, has been going nuts on our Christmas tree. She's trying to live in it, I think. Climbs up as high as she can, knocks all the ornaments off. She like takes running dives and just kind of dives into the thing. She's kind of driving me bonkers, but she's a kitty, so she'll learn eventually. So like that. Then you go around and flip the bottom two bands over on all the pins. She likes to sit on her hind legs and just kind of reach up and grab the, the tree, plays with it, kind of cute. Push everything down and now we're going to expand again. So we're going to expand kind of every third pin around. So our first pin to expand is going to be right here on the bottom. So for here I'm going to grab all four bands, bring them down a pin, then I'll bring the top two back up to the where they were, and then we're going to go, and we need to move these top two up so we can expand this third one down right here. So I'm going to take all four bands here, move them up a pin, all four bands here, move them up a pin, make sure you get them all back on before you take your hook out, and then this third one I can grab the top two bands and bring them up to that empty pin. And now that's expanded as well. Then we'll come over to the other side. We're going to expand this top pin. So I'm going to grab all four bands, pull them up a pin, and then bring the top two back down. And now we want to come down and we're going to expand this third pin up on the left. So again, we need to make a little room. I'm going to grab these four bands, bring them down a pin. Grab the next four bands, bring those down a pin. And then on this third pin that we want to expand, I'll grab the top two bands and bring them down to the empty pin. So now we're on eight pins on each side. So now we're going to do four rows all the way around. And this is kind of where it starts curving around the bottom of the, bas the box up to the top. I just had that in my head. I don't know why. So two bands all the way around for four rows. We tried doing the squirt bottle with the with the kitty in the tree, but 
the kids, the two youngest kids, they really love the squirt bottle. So they kind of sprayed everything that was not the cat in the tree. So that was, that kind of didn't work very well. And they're so mobile that they can, I mean, they could get stuff off the top of the refrigerator if they want to. They're just that determined. So I have to find another way to keep her on the tree. So all the way around for that first row. And when we flip on the bottom on the first row, some of them will have two bands from where we expanded to flip over. There's two. And then some will still have the four. So four, four, two, two, four, and four. Just so that once you're done with the row, you have four bands on each pin still. So there's four, four, two, two, four, four, two, and two. And you want to push all those down. And I'm going to mark my rows with a band. I'm just going to set it up here so I know what row I'm on. Just because it's one of those nights I don't want to forget. So we'll do our second row all the way around. Plus I'm not too sure that the water bothered the kitty enough to keep her out of the tree. Because she likes to kind of sit on the edge of the tub while people take showers and she just kind of hangs out whereas my older cats as soon as you turn on the shower they bolt as far away as possible because they know there's water in there so we'll see she's a handful but she's a cutie like that now we'll flip the bottom four on this row And although I'm not entirely, it's not a very original name, I don't think, like our other cats. But I think that this one is going to be, end up being called Miss Kitty. Just because that's what Violet seems to think her name is all the time. It makes it easier. Although my middle son was a little upset because he wanted to call her Cheese Puff. I'm not too sure where that came from but <laughs> there's our second rows done so third row all the way around I told him that he could probably call her cheese puff still if he wanted to I don't think that um, she'll really notice a whole lot when you have more than one cat it seems that unless you're saying kitty kitty or come here they don't really seem to focus a whole lot on that they have a name because I've had in the past my oldest kitty before she passed away she knew her name and she'd come running to it so I think more cats or more animals it's harder for them to learn their name so there's our row all the way around I'll flip the bottom four everything down mark my row and I'm going to kind of loosen up some of the center here just pull the bands up and over towards the center a little less tension then we'll do our fourth row all the way around I think this weekend we're going to go see the 
rotary lights in a couple different cities around us. I love the lights at Christmas time. They're one of my favorites to go look at all of them. It didn't work out going before, so that kind of stunk. So I, we planned to go last week, I think, and just didn't work out. But we have we've decorated the house with our lights. When Grayson comes home off the bus every day, and he makes sure to run up and plug them in so they're ready for the evening. Just like his favorite thing. So there's our fourth row all the way around. Flip the bottom four again. The other day, though, he came home and. My oldest, Wesley, had already plugged them in when he got home from school. And so Grayson got off the bus and he was just like, They're already on! I want to do it! So he ran up and he unplugged them and plugged them back in. <laughs> He's like, there, that's better. <laughs> He's a cutie. Alright, there's our four rows. Pull up my center. Alright, so now we want to put on our mouth band. So you want a band for the mouth, whatever color you want it to be. I'm going to turn my loom so I have the right side away from me. Makes it a little easier. And if we come in towards the center, so right by where our cat band is here, that's where the band is going to go across these two pins. So I'll put it on my hook. Double it. Or not double it. Grab it so it stays doubled. And then take it off. And then I'm going to put my hook down through the bands on the left side. So the other, band, the other pin over here is the one we're going to pull it over to. So I'll put my hook through. Grab the mouth band. I'll pull it up through the bands and then bring it up over the top of the pin. Now pull it down so it's wrapped around the pin. Still hanging on to it. I'll go in through the right side, grab that mouth band again, pull it up, and then I can let go. Pull it up through, up over the top of this pin, then pull it down again. So now it's wrapped around two pins. And then once it's here, just take it and flip it up over the top of the pins. So it should look like that when we're done. Then our next row is going to be our cheek row, so you'll want your cheeks. So two bands, starting down here. And once we get to the spot right next to the mouth, we'll put our cheek there. And then the space in the middle will be two bands. And then the other cheek over on the other side. And then it's two bands around the rest. Still have a lot of holiday shopping to do. Seems like there's more and more people every year to find something for, which is cool, but it's more people, more fun. Just makes a little bit, makes you think a little bit more. <laughs> so like this, and you'll flip the bottom four. I used to just kind of do like baking for holidays for gifts but it seemed like more and more as I started getting into it more and more that people were coming up with allergies or 
things they couldn't eat or didn't want to eat or didn't like to eat or couldn't eat and it just got way too difficult. Alright, so our next row is going to be our eye row. So you want your eyes. And it's the same thing as a cheek row. We just put the eyes where the cheeks are. So two bands again starting down here. And then when we get right above the cheeks, we'll do the eye. And if you have the beads, you should be able to poke the bands through the larger ones. two bands, then another eye, and then two bands around the rest. So now I only bake the cookies for those that I know would be sad if they didn't get them, which would be like some grandparents couple cousins. It still turns into a lot of people and a lot of dozens of cookies. They're tasty. Like that. And then flip the bottom four. Like so, push everything down. And we'll do a row all the way around. with Grayson earlier tonight he was he gets off the bus really late I think for a little kid because he doesn't get home until almost a quarter to five but he's usually pretty kind of tired and a little sassy when he gets home he's he was napping up until he started school so I think he's still used to that but tonight so there's our row all the way around. Flip the bottom four. I bring him in the house to get him off the bus and I was like, all right, buddy, let's take off your stuff. He's like, okay. So he starts working on stuff and I get to help him get everything off and he kind of left it there on the floor. I was like, let's get it over by the, by the closet. He's like, whatever, mommy. I was like, oh, where did you learn that? That's, uh... That's some sass right there. <laughs> it's like, no, you're not supposed to do that to your teenager. So we had to discuss that it was a very nice way to say that he didn't want to do it. <laughs> he just like, I was waiting for him to say, whatever, mommy, when I was done. That would have been hilarious, but not so good. <laughs> it's always amazing when your kids go to school, the things that change. Um, being around other kids or just being around more things, less control as a parent. It's hard. So like that. So now I'll say this. For this row, um, it's right here at the tippy top before we do kind of our little um, piece to make this rounder or make sure that it stays round. Um, you could leave this row out if you wanted to. Um, I don't think that it would make a difference. So if you want to save 32 bands, um, you can do that. I will actually, in the tutorial, and right here, I am going to leave that row out so that you can see the difference between this one, which has the row, 
or what I'm going to do now which doesn't have the row. Um, I think that it'll look just fine without it so I just wanted to kind of point that out because this one is it's a little bit taller so you can get something a little bit bigger in it so you put a row on but if you want it a little bit shorter if you don't have something quite as big to put in it you can leave the row out like I'm going to do. So put a row on if you want it to be the bigger one like this one or leave the row off and do what I do here. So hopefully that's clear. <laughs> I don't like changing on you but um, it's just I once I put these on camera side by side you'll see that the one's shorter so um, that's where that is. There's a row here if you want it to be taller like this one or leave it off and continue as I do. So once you made that decision we're going to do a row around but it's going to be an X row or a cross row. So you still have two bands but you put them on your pin and cross them. And you'll do that all the way around. Grayson already came home with the calling everything poopy. And I think he knows that he's, when he includes people with that, I think he knows that it's not a nice thing, but it's kind of just exploring words and choices. I know the other kids did that too with other things, and you know, he does it and he thinks it's funny, and it's hard to not think it's kind of funny because he's just like, poopy mommy. And it's like, um. And he's not doing it like he's mad or anything. He's just saying it to, I think, to get a reaction to see what how people react to him saying different things. So it's cute, but it's not cute. He's four, so he's he gets a little leeway. <laughs> all right, so there's our X row all the way around. You're gonna push that down because on top of this, we're gonna do another row all the way around with two bands and you just put them on normally. So it gets to be a lot of bands on the pin, but it's not too bad. And I know I should have said this before I started these little rows here, but if you wanted it to be a different color, um, you can change, make the X row and this row a different color and it would not like blend in to the the rest of the box it would be separate so because of how we put it together so you could make it a separate color you do the X row in this row that we're doing now a different color if you wanted to too busy thinking about poopy mommy I guess All right, so we have those all the way around. So now what we need to do is that X row that we put on, it's in the center, and there are four bands that are part of it. So you have the four bands from the row way back, then you have the four bands for the X row, and then you have the four bands on top for the row we just put on that was normal. It's those four middle X row bands that need to go up over the top of the pin. So just find those middle four bands, and flip them over the top. I'm usually on one side it's usually pretty easy for me and then the other side it's a little harder. But just find those middle four, flip them over. And then after we get done doing this we'll go back and check to make sure that we didn't pull anything over we weren't supposed to or that we got everything.
All right. Then if you kind of pull up the center a little bit, it's not going to work super great. But you just want to go back in and make sure that everything is separate in between here. That you don't have, you didn't grab any of the bottom bands here and pull them over. And that you have four on the bottom and four on the top. And then once you've done that, what we need to do is we need to position this into kind of around the bands that are already on the pin below from that last row. So how we do that, so take your hook, stick them in through those top four bands, grab the bottom four, pull them up through the ones that are on the top, then once you're there, take those top ones off, and then the ones that are on your hook, put them back onto the pin. And you'll do that all the way around for every pin. And this gives it the nice stiff edge so that it doesn't kind of curl over like most or like designs would without it. I need to dig out another pin bar because I broke one on this one a while ago. I just keep forgetting to change it. So far it's holding together fairly well with the little base plate. I jinx myself. Kind of excited too because today I got an email saying that I was approved to go to the the toy fair again this coming year in February, which is super exciting because you have to apply for access to go because it's a basically a private event for toy people or toy and craft people. Last year I went, but Rainbow Loom let me use one of their passes that they got for free. They got it for free and they gave it to me for free, so <laughs> they didn't pay for anything. Well, except for my dinner one night when I was there, which was awesome. And I embarrassed myself with my two long fingernails and couldn't get my soda open. <laughs> that. So once you've got those all popped over, just kind of pull up your center a little bit. And then it might help to, because we're going to close this next, it might help to go around and kind of um, take your hook and separate out the top and the bottom bands. It's not going to be super easy because we have these, this edge we just put on is wrapped around them. So it's going to be kind of hard to tell what's the top and what's the bottom. Um, it's not going to be a super big deal if you get a top one or a bottom one, a top and a bottom, when we close it in this next portion. But if you grab like two top ones, um, it might not close <laughs> or it might have a little gap. So, and I only have three bands on that pin. Oh no! Where'd the other one go? Hmm. As long as it is not loose, we're fine. And it looks to be wrapped around this portion, so we're good. Even though double banding, if you lose one band, you're still good. See, even I'm not perfect. 
we got one side. I'll do the other side real quick. Alright, so like that. So what we're going to do is close this. So push everything down. You already have everything kind of separated. So starting down here, I'm going to go in through the top two bands, grab the bottom two bands, pull them up through, and then bring it over to the left. Then over here, we'll go through the top four bands. So the two bands we brought over and then the next two top bands. Grab the bottom two bands, pull them up through, and then bring them up. And then repeat that all the way around. So through the top four, grab the bottom two, pull them through. If you have any goofs like I did with the three bands, you'll just go through like the top one band or top three bands go through the top three bands then grab the bottom two bands and pull those up and to the next spot and I'm not gonna lie I went back and I fixed them <laughs> it just involved pulling the little trim up over the top of the pin putting the bands back, and then putting the trim back towards the center. They were all secure though. They were just wrapped in the wrong spot. weird going backwards on the one side but and then do this last one bring it towards that one that only had the two bands on it so this should be the only open point now on your box so I'm going to go and start away from my open point and start removing the bands Once I've removed all of them except for the last one, then I'll take my hook, put it through there, take it off the loom, and then I'm going to turn it inside out right away. So I have these two on. I'll pull the ones next to the hook through the other ones, and then I'll just find a spot kind of underneath somewhere put my hook through and I'll take a band pull it through everything on my hook back on do a slip knot pull tight and then you just take your hook kind of thread it up in through the braid portion grab that tail band and pull it down in and that should hide it pretty well and then you want to give it some good stretches. And this is where we find out if anything will fall apart. These bands are kind of sticky, so I don't remember them there being any of the extra little there's many of the little extra loops on the opaque bands, but you just kind of hide them in there. Or pull the bands, not hide them, but pull the bands so that they go where they're supposed to.
once you've kind of got that all done, you can take it, get a little more stretch, turn it back the other way, and you have a sweet bottom portion to our present. And you want to adjust your cheeks if you need to, find your mouth band, pull it out, give it a good tug. Because it was put on, because we kind of loomed backwards for the mouth portion, a lot of times it wants to stay kind of a more frowny face. But if you give it a good pull and kind of pull it down, you get the nice smile. So, bottom portion, done. And of course, now, like always, it would probably be a good time to take a break if you wanted to. The top portion does not take a super long time, but it still will take a little bit. So, if you're ready to start, we'll go with the other portion. So we're going to put these on, or some of them on first. And we're going to be working on six pins to start. So again, kind of starting in the or starting in the center of your loom. I'm going to take my first little bunch here. I'm going to put my first one right here. So this is my center pin. I'm putting my first one right here. And then we'll grab, and then we'll leave this little tail hanging off. Then I'm going to grab my second one. And that's going to go the pin below. Like that. But now, this one we just put on, I'm going to stick my hook through that cap band. And it's going to skip the pin where we put the one on before and come around to the top of our six pin. And it's going to go here. Like that. And then our next one. We're going to start on top of the one that's hanging off. And then again, we'll go through the cap band. And this is going to stretch around, skip this one on the top and come around to the left side. Next one, we'll start on the top. Put our hook through the cap band. And this one will stretch around to the next one below on the left. Next one. This one will start on this top left. Again, put your hook through the cap band. Bring it around, skipping this pin. We'll bring it to the center on the bottom. Next one, starting on this lower left. That was my chair. Just making sure. Put your hook through the cap band. And this will go around the bottom pin. And come around up here. And then this one that's hanging off, you put your hook through the cap band now. And this will go on the bottom center. Alright, so once you have that on there, we'll be ready to go with the next portion. So we still have three left. Don't worry, this isn't all in the loom for very long. So, But around these center pins, we're going to do a starburst. So you want your two bands, whatever color your lid portion is going to be. And you're just going to go from the center out to the six pins around. Doesn't matter where you start. Mm 
like that. Center will get a cap band, two bands, wrapped around three times. It's a little squishy, so go one, two, and three. Then you'll take your hook, go in through your cap band, find the top two bands, wherever they are to the outside, pull them up through the center, back towards themselves, and you'll do that all the way around. Like that. And then we have those extra three pieces. Well, not extra, but so take your hook through one. And this one is going to go across the long ways. So I'm going to take my hook, grab all four of those bands that are on the starburst pin here, top center pin, lift them off, pull down my piece, and then put the bands back onto the pin. Then go in through the cap band, go over to the opposite side, pick up all four bands, Pull those through and then back onto the pin. So there's our center one. And then we're going to do ones that cross over to the other sides. So I'll start up here, pick up the bands, pull this down, put it back on, go through the cap band. Bring it over to the other side. Same thing. Like that. And then one more. Start here. And then cap band. And across to the last one. I like that. So it should kind of end up like a little crossed little ball right there. So then what we need to do is we're just going to go around our outside and flip over the little pieces that are hanging off for the bow. And if you can find the one where it kind of starts where there's a top, one on the top, you can do that. You can use your hook or your fingers we're just going to slide them over towards the center. It might be easier if we take them all and kind of slide them over, slide the long pieces over first, and then worry about sliding the sides over. Just slide them up over the top. Like that. Push the starburst bands down and you can kind of go around and pull up the bow bands a little bit just so that they're as much towards the center as possible so they're not in the way of our looming. So like that. Very pretty bow. So now we're going to do a row all the way around. Still our, now it's the side of the present.
that. Then go around and flip the bottom four. Push everything down and now we're going to expand all the pins so starting up here on the top right I can find them grab the top two bands pull them up a pin then come down to the bottom right grab all four bands pull them down bring the top two back Put them on the pin that they were on. Come over to the other side. Grab all four bands on the top one. Bring them up a pin. Then bring the top two back. Down below. Grab the top two bands. Pull them down a pin. And then we'll do the centers. Just grab the top two, see what side they're coming from, and take them to that side. If they come from the left, you go to the left. If they come from the right, go to the right. So these are coming from the left, so they go to the left, and these go to the right. Push everything down. Now we're going to do a row all the way around two bands I've been doing the 24 days of Christmas with Grayson and Violet and it's definitely very fun but it's also challenging at times because they are little kids and they want to do what they want to do and you have to be like no stay over here so I can film you <laughs> or hoping that they like everything that I've put into the tree for them so like that roll all the way around now you'll flip the bottom two bands on every pin leaving four on the top so far I think I've done pretty well with what I picked out for them but Sometimes I think that they're a little, mm, especially because at first it was all toys, but then they had some days where they got some candy, so now they're hoping for candy every day, and that doesn't happen, so I think they're a little disappointed when they're like, just toys? <laughs> Alright, so now that you have that, we're going to increase again. So we're going to start, we're going to increase this third pin up. So first we'll move these two pin, the bands on these two pins back. So I'll pick up all four, move them down. Pick up these four, move them down. And then this third pin, we're also going to pick up all four bands, bring them back down a pin, and then pick up the top two and bring them back up to the empty pin. Like that. Then we'll go up to the top pin up here, pick up the top two bands, bring them up a pin. Then on the other side, we want to expand this third pin down. So I'm going to pick up the bands on the top two pins and just move them up out of the way. And then on this third one, we're also going to move those up a pin. And then bring the top two back down. And then we'll expand this last one down here on the left. Pick up all four, bring them down, and bring the top two back. So we'll do a row all the way around this, two bands, and 
and obviously with filming the 24 days of Christmas I have to do it a little bit ahead of time because otherwise the there's no way that I could film the entire video and then get it edited because it's like each time that I do a video for that it probably takes over an hour which doesn't seem like a lot but that's an hour of filming stuff and I have to reduce it down to you know five six minutes that's a lot of editing so like that so now you're going to be flipping either the bottom four or the bottom two just so that there's four bands left on the pin when you're done That is a lot of editing for making the videos and it probably takes me mm, two hours <laughs> to all said and done. It's a, it's a hard work actually to do that part. There's so much cute stuff but you don't want to put it all in and then if you put, you have to make them quick and happy and fast and I sh Alright, so now what we want to do is put the cap bands on the pins for this little edge that's on our lid. Um, you can do them the same color that you've been working on. You can do them multiple colors. You can do them just totally different color. Um, but I think that you still would want to put them on regardless. Otherwise, this will end up um, being not round. It'll be much more kind of folding in on itself. and So it'd be kind of like a... like this... <laughs> So we still want the cap bands, you can just choose what colors you want. I'm going to do the alternating colors around like I did before. So I'll start, I'm going to put a purple on all the pins and I'll go back and put a blue on all the pins. So let's make sure these all push down so it's just one band on the pin and then wrapped around. And you'll do that, each pin is going to get two, so like I'm going to come back around and put on another one. So depending on how your color choices are, if you have two of the same, you can put them both on. I'm just going to go and do the purple first. Then there's music and... It's a lot of work. It's a lot of fun though. I did not have anything like that when I was a kid, so very exciting to be able to do it for them. They're definitely loving it. They wake up every morning and be like, Mom, are we going to open the tree? And I have to say there's there's been a couple times that uh, Miss Violet has gotten very quiet and when I go get her she's decided that she's going to open the tree on her own. So I've had to repair it a couple times already. So she definitely enjoys it. I'll have to make her her own just for playtime or something. <laughs> something that's easily fixable for the punch part. And she can put whatever she wants in it and then punch them all open and then just put some more tissue paper in there. Little kids are like ninjas. Super, they get super quiet. You need to go find out what they're doing. And most of the time, they're playing nicely. Because they've started this lately where they want to go play in their rooms. And so they'll go in there and they'll be playing with their food or um, their play food, or their little kitchen, or play with their Legos or blocks or. Tinker toys and all that good stuff. But it's that one time when they're being quiet and you go to check on them and they're not there. They've ninjaed themselves into the bathroom to go brush their teeth with the whole entire tube of toothpaste. Those are awesome. Alright, so I have my cap bands on. I have two on each pin. So I'm going to push those down.
And then we do a row all the way around with our basket color. It's amazing because I go to like fold laundry and it's very, our laundry room is close to our, close to the bedrooms or close enough that I can usually hear them or can hear them whenever they're in there playing and so it's like, I'm not very far away but somehow they just manage to, they know to be quiet or like Grayson, he's potty trained of course so he's he can go in the bathroom and he's usually pretty good in there but sometimes he's just like I'm gonna wash my hands with the entire bottle of soap all right like that so now when we flip I would flip the very bottom row first up over the top and then grab your cap bands. If you have them in different colors, you want to grab them in the order that you want them to be over. So I'll just start from the bottom, put the purple over, and then I'll grab the blue and pull that over. If your cap bands are the same color, it doesn't necessarily matter how you pull them over just so that they all get over. And all that you're left with is the four bands that are the color of your present. It's always the question with little kids is like, I don't want to hover over them, over everything that they do, because I mean, our, our home is a, a safe place for them to be. Um, so they want to be able to play and kind of do pretend play. And we play together a lot, but then there's other times where it's like, and I want them to be able to kind of relate to each other and play together. And um, But how much freedom do you give them? <laughs> Do you kind of sit outside their door or do you wait for, to kind of listen for them and when somebody starts screaming then you know that they're fighting or deciding they both want the same toy. Wait for the water running so you know that somebody's in the bathroom or the kitchen. It's a very fine line between giving them a little bit of freedom to be themselves and explore and try new things to watching them like a hawk because they can ninja themselves around the house. We have door alarms on all our door doors too. Scares them every time it opens. <laughs> it's very loud, loud high-pitched buzz. And I forgot to turn it off when I went and got something from the mail the other day and opened the door and they're like, oh my god, what's happening? <laughs> all right, so now once you had this, our cat bands are all flipped over. We have only the four bands on every pin. And now we're going to close this. And we are done then. So this is closed the same way as the lower portion. Um, you can go around and kind of separate out the top and lower bands to make it a little easier when you do it. I 
And this time I'm pretty sure I have four bands on all my pins. Jinx myself though. And again, it's not a huge deal if you get like a top and a bottom band, but if you get both top bands, it won't close. Alright, so now starting down here, go in through the top two bands, grab the bottom two, pull them up through, and bring them over to the left. And then you go all the way around by going through now the top four bands, grabbing the bottom two, pulling them up through, and going to the next one. And keep doing that through the top four, grab the bottom two, pull them up through the top four, bottom two. I'm super excited about the toy fair. I can't believe that. It's so awesome. You have to meet certain criteria to be able to go. And I was looking on their website and kind of going, I don't know if I fit into all these categories and does it apply? And because <laughs> they wanted like press badges and bylined articles. And I'm like, yeah, I don't think, um, I don't have that stuff. <laughs> so I had to see. There's other things that qualified me to go. And luckily there was. So excited. The only thing that stinks is that it is around Valentine's Day that I go. Alright, back to the beginning. So now we can take off the bands. Except for our open point right here. So it'll be Valentine's weekend that it the toy fair takes place. Not sure why they do that. I suppose Valentine's doesn't matter to everybody or really anybody. <laughs> Except for maybe like couples that are first dating. So I have them all off of the outside pins. I'll go through those four open bands that are on the open one. Take off the wrist. And try not to lose it. <laughs> no, I didn't. That's something else. We're good. So I have the... There we go. Four bands on there. Pull them through each other. And then again, just find some place below to pull a band through. Everything. Make your slip knot. Then hide your tail. Through the braiding there. You give it a little stretch. And then what also helps, so I'm going to turn this inside out to the bottom here. And you have that starburst that we did the very first and then we put all those bands on there for the bow. If you go in, take your hook and go right next to that center cap band. Not right there. Come out. I like that. So you go underneath that center. Like here's a center cap band, and then those bands that came out for that starburst. If you go in there with your hook and kind of pull on that little portion. It helps to kind of situate the bow a little bit farther away from the being smushed up in the center. But if you don't think you have good bands or you're worried about your center cap band, obviously don't do this.
so I just kind of made that center portion a little bit more apparent. Looks like I pulled a cap band through here. There we go. So you go around, adjust your cap bands, adjust the edges. For this, it's going to be tight, and it may fit your present fine that way. Or you can go around if it needs to be a little bit wider. Go around, and this braided green edge on mine, if I take that and just pull on each one all the way around, it will loosen up that kind of the amount of curve to the edge of the lid. Just be careful when you get towards where it's tied that you don't pull too much or kind of pull out your your tie portion. That would not be good. So like so. So what do you think? It's super cute, I think. A little container for lots of goodies. Sweet little bow. Let me pull these out too. Like that. Adorable. Have a cap band. My cap band migrated. There we go. That's better. There. Now, super cute. <laughs> So I hope that you think this is adorable and it works for putting little presents in if you want to. Oh, I think it's cute. And if you want to see the difference between that one row, it's not much, but just a little bit. So, if at all. It's hard to even tell if there's a difference, but... I mean, you can make it... You can make this one three feet tall if you wanted to <laughs> but thank you guys very much for watching I definitely appreciate it I know this was a longer tutorial and I always appreciate when you watch those because they obviously um, have taken much more work to create them and to put them together so it means a lot to me that you're watching and listening through all of that <laughs> so I know it can't be easy sometimes there But I will have more things for you soon. I hope that you think these are fun and cute. And I just love the little bow on top. It's so adorable. But thank you. And I will have more things for you soon. If you make some of these, use them as presents. You can share that with me on my Instagram, which is at Crafting Fantastic. Or on my Facebook page, which is Feeling Spiffy or Crafting Fantastic. Don't forget to subscribe and like my videos. That way other people can find them. And you'll know when I come out with new things. But until next time. Happy looming.